Good morning, brethren. It's still morning here by me at, at the time when I press the button to start recording. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. And please read along with me in the scriptures that we will be looking at today. Um, recently, I've, I heard... Free grace, antinomianism, it's one and the same, in my opinion, is the most deadliest heresy that is out there right now today. Um, because it is a heresy that infects every branch, as it were, of Christianity. And its application of the antinomianist disgusting doctrine that it is um, has its roots in Vatican II ecumenicalism because any branch of Christianity can apply it and, and now let me let me explain uh, for the for example in order to become a Catholic there is a major process that one has to go through confirmation and yada 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 uh, to become a Baptist even um, you know there's also a process same with the Pentecostal but you I mean to be part of their little thing that they have their little church building thingies there but there's usually a process with these things but easy believism antinomianism can is like crept into all of these and remember, Christianity is not the faith that was once delivered on to the saints. Okay? <clears throat> a while ago, there was a, there is a female teacher, warning, named Renee Rowland. And uh, if you've ever heard of her, uh, if you haven't, good, keep it that way. She is one who says that the Holy Ghost doesn't convict you of sin but convicts you of righteousness. The antinomianist, the disgusting, wicked devil antinomianist, preaches virtually the same thing, that the Holy Ghost doesn't convict you of sin, but convicts you of righteousness. And they eschew certain scriptures. And you got to remember, the antinomianist is scripturally illiterate. They couldn't expound the fly. But they do, the guys who are teaching this, who are pushing this, uh, they know enough of scripture to twist it. See, there has to be a working knowledge of what is true in order for one to deceive the way that these guys do. No, not one of these guys who are especially, especially on YouTube, not one of these easy believist antinomianist devils are saved. They're all lost going to hell. Every single one of them. Okay? They preach another gospel. They preach another Jesus. Okay? They have no binding to any morality of the law. None whatsoever. They're devils. And I have heard that they even the the one guy and I, I got this from that you know a little short that the one devil did I saw that it's like the one guy's like the Holy Spirit doesn't convict you of sin convicts you of righteousness what do they mean by that they mean this is sin don't worry about it don't worry about it you're you you saved yourself by your own belief the more you sin the more grace abounds don't worry about it this is sin. Don't worry. This is sin. Don't worry. That's what they are telling you, the Holy Ghost, the Lord, in the saved believer is telling you. Okay? What, let's say it the scripture. First of all, warning. The fate of these people, these antinomianists, who are teaching promoting this satanic doctrine. Jeremiah 20, verses 1 on to verse 6. Now Peshur the son of Emir the priest, 
who was also chief governor in the house of the Lord, heard that Jeremiah prophesied these things. And what did Jeremiah prophesy? The defeat of Jerusalem, to surrender to the um, chastisement, to surrender to the king of Babylon. And if they went out to him, they would live. If they stayed and resisted, they would die. Okay? Totally contrary to what the prophets at the time of Jeremiah were, you know, itching and ticking, uh, tickling their ears. Uh, Jeremiah is my favorite book in all of Scripture. And when you compare Jeremiah with what's going on today, the parallels are striking. Christianity is itching the ear. The saints of the Most High God, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, are warning you of what's coming. Warning you of them. Okay? And people don't want to hear that. Then pay sure smote Jeremiah the prophet and put him in the stocks that were in the high gate of Benjamin which was by the house of the Lord. And it came to pass on the morrow that Peshur brought forth Jeremiah out of the stocks. Then said Jeremiah unto him, The Lord hath not called thy name Peshur, but Magor Misabib. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will make thee a terror to thyself and to all thy friends. And they shall fall by the sword of their enemies. And thine eyes shall behold it. And I will give all Judah into the hand of the king of Babylon. And he shall carry them captive into Babylon. And shall slay them with the sword. Moreover, I will deliver all the strength of this city. The, you know, the little gods that you trust in yourselves. And the labors thereof and all the precious things thereof. And all the treasures of the kings of Judah will I give into the hand of their enemies, which shall spoil them, and take them, and carry them to Babylon. And thou, Peshur, thou, false prophet, preaching another gospel and another Jesus, with your wicked, satanic, just believe and receive doctrine, which is doctrine of devils. And thou, Peshur, and all that dwell in thine house shall go into captivity, Thou shalt come to Babylon, and thou shalt die there, and shalt be buried there, thou and all thy friends to whom thou hast prophesied lies. And that's the end that justifies the means. The body of Christ is going to be redeemed before the time of Jacob's trouble. These guys are going to be left behind, and they're going to be preaching during a dispensation which is faith and works, just believe and receive. And then when the mark of the beast comes around, uh, scripturally illiterate people are not going to have enough sense wherewithal to search the scriptures, of course. And people are going to take the mark of the beast in their right hand or in their forehead and be damned. And see, these antinomianist people are setting you up for that. Why are they doing this? Well, it's uh, let's read the most hated portion of scripture to the antinomianist. Now, and see, this is telltale of the antinomianist. They come to Romans 3. They love Romans 3. They do. But they avoid Romans 1. Romans 2. And Romans 3 up to verse 18. Okay? Because Romans 1, 2, and 3 is there to convict you of your sin. Convict you of your need for a Savior. And also to convict you that you cannot save yourself. It also is rife with personal accountability, which the antinomianist, free grace or sleazy believist, likes to avoid. And this, to the antinomianist devil pond scum, is the most hated portion of scripture to them. Romans 3, verses 10 on to verse 18. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. That includes you and me. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. <coughs> their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceits. Deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness, 
Ever listen to some of these guys in their live streams? Yeah. Their feet are swift to shed blood to attack saints. Destruction are, and misery are in their ways. At the moment, it doesn't seem like, like that, but see, the antinomianist has you focus only on the temporal, while the saint, it's like, this is not it. Eternal mindset. See, and that's the thing. They are of the world. We are not of the world. We're going to look at that today, okay? They are of the world, therefore they speak of the world, and the world hears them. We're going to read that portion of scripture today, okay? We are not of this world. Hence, the difference, okay? The antinomianist, what little scripture they know, will come to the scripture to try to justify any sin that they want. And they can get away with it because in a general sense, the populace at large in any nation under heaven is scripturally ignorant of the scriptures themselves. Okay, they are. That's how these guys are able to get away with such outrageous, outlandish things. That one guy, the bald-headed guy from England, okay? Love Satan, pray for Satan. I mean, how, how is he going to, how does, how do these guys get away with that? Because people don't know the word of God. They don't know God. Okay? <laughs> As it is written. Oh, wait. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, verse 14. Whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace have they not known. They offer you a false peace. They offer you peace with sin. Why? There is no fear of God before them. I've met many saints, and I've talked with many saints. Saints will justify themselves to a point. A saint eventually quits trying to justify themselves, and they will justify God. Okay? That's a trademark of a saint. A saint can, a saint will, you know, we get bullheaded, we get stubborn. But a saint eventually be like, what am I going to do? You're, you're God. What am I going to do? I can't, I can't deny. But see, the faith will keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. And search exhaustively for escape route. 1 John 4. We're going to have a little expository today. Because... Only a lost individual would say to you that the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, doesn't convict you of sin. They get really cute. They, and we'll, we'll, we'll go through this. We'll go through this. Okay, don't worry about it. Don't get ahead of me. But a saved person won't say that. A saved person can say anything a lost person will say, yes. But a saved individual... Someone who has the Lord within them has the audacity to say, well, the Lord within me isn't going to convict me of sin, but convict me of righteousness. And see, when they say that to you, you're righteous, so don't worry about the sin that you're committing. Don't worry about it. Go on in it. That's what they're doing. Because 1 John 4, verses 4 and verse 6, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Look across the page to 1 John 3, verses 7 on to verse 10. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Verse 9. 
Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. Now, this whole thing is talking about the Spirit of God that dwells within the believer. Okay? The antinomianist free grace person has that spirit of Antichrist dwelling within them. They are of the world. This is talking about those of us saints who have the Lord within them. Prove it to you, keep reading the verse. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, being born again. For his seed remaineth in him. The seed is the thing that ties this together. Because when the Lord saves you, he seals you with himself. He's not going anywhere. You have the Father dwelling within you. These guys don't have the Father within them. They're not saved. So his seed remaineth in him. So you are born again. You are a new creature. Why? Because the Lord lives within you. His seed remains in you. Whosoever of born of God doth not commit sin. God within you. Dear saint, you know this. Dear Christian, God within you will not justify sin. God within you will not guide you into sin nor be okay with sin. God, if you mess around with him, will take his hand off of you and let you destroy yourself and you'll know. You'll know because I don't care who you are, saint. Uh, when you're out of fellowship, you know. You know you're out of fellowship with the Lord. You know that he's like, okay, I've had a brother warn you. I've had a sister warn you. But you want to, you, okay, here you go, take you. But you're on the shelf there. Go ahead on in your trespass. Go right ahead. That'll scare the hell out of you. Okay, that can happen. But see, the God who is Jesus Christ, who is God the Father, Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. God never sinned. God can sin. God within you, saint, cannot, will not guide you or be okay with sin. Okay? But see, the antinomianist says otherwise. And they say, well, he, he convicts you of righteousness. And they're doing that to keep you enslaved. Enslaved. To your sin. Okay? And there's a difference between a slave and a servant. Okay? See, they keep you in bondage to that sin. By telling you, well, God... And of course, that spirit of Antichrist... If it feels good, do it. Don't worry about it. Just go on. Yea, hath God said. See, that's proof that these guys aren't saved. When you got an idiot dude... Who has, the, you know, to, who says something like that, well, the Holy Ghost in you doesn't convict you of sin, but convicts you of righteousness. What? He says that because he's not saved. That spirit of Antichrist that was in him who said that is there to justify sin. It's like, don't worry about it. You're righteous. You're righteous. Don't worry about your sin. Continue on in it. Okay? Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. The Spirit of God in you is not in any way, shape, or form going to lead you into sin, guide you into sin, or be okay with your sin. The Jesus of Scripture does this. That one thing you lack. Okay? And see, when you read the Scripture and you're out of fellowship with the Lord, He's going to tear your hide off. That's why some of you put the scripture away. Yeah. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him. The Father, who dwells within the saved believer, the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that spirit. And he cannot sin, because he is born of God. God in you cannot sin. God in you will not guide you into sin. God in you will not be okay with your sin. Okay? Verse 10. In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doth, doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. And who is my brother? See, evidence. It's, it's like, 
when don't judge me only God can judge me okay when you hear Christians say that they're trying to justify themselves they're trying to justify sin the same principle when you got an idiot who's telling you like Renee Roland did, did that the Holy Ghost doesn't convict you of sin he, he convicts you of righteousness meaning uh, this is wrong don't worry about it I shouldn't be not don't worry about it you're, you're, you just saved yourself by your own belief your faith is in your faith okay Dude, don't worry about it don't worry about it I shouldn't be doing this a little doesn't hurt don't worry that's what they're doing that's what they're doing and they can get away with it because people don't know the scriptures people don't know who God is and remember, most of these, every single one I've ever, ever encountered of these antinomianist pond scum devils, they're all Trinitarians. That's not the true God. They're offering you another gospel and another Jesus. They don't have the right God. <laughs> okay? They don't have the right Jesus. Their gospel is just believe and receive. Their gospel tells you that it's by grace through faith from beginning to end. And anyone with half a brain in scripture can prove them wrong instantly. Some of them have to admit the obvious, have admitted the obvious. But most of them don't. And they can get away with that. Because most of you are ignorant of scripture. Because you don't want to know the truth. Okay? Alright? Now... Well, also in 1 John, go to 1 John 2 now, verse 15. On to verse 20. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Free gracers love the world. Dude, listen, don't, I don't suggest, but when you listen to these people converse with each other, and just converse in general. They are all about the world. They're all about trying to keep as much of the world that they can and justify it with just believe and receive and with nonsense like, well, the Holy Ghost doesn't convict you of sin. You're not saved. First John, I mean, First John 3, verse 9, shows you that. Okay? Okay? You, you, you free graces, you're not saved. You're lost. You're guiding people to hell, pretty boy. All right? You're, you're leading people to hell. But it's all about what they can get away with and what they can justify. They're all about the world, okay? For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh. It's all about the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes the visual stimuli, and the pride of life. Free gracers, antinomianists, preach a license to sin. It's like, act now, act now, for a limited time only. Absolutely free. God's grace, which is given to us freely. But you know, and, and here's the thing. God's grace, okay, you're the heretic. You're the devil. You're the liar. Okay, jerk, all right? God's grace costs you something. Your self-righteousness. When you talk to a free gracer, an antinomianist, you, you just scratch them. And the I'm better than so-and-so, I am saved because I just believe. Some of them will, uh, you know, shadow box with you a little bit. Well, we're, we're saved by what Christ did on the cross. So. And your faith is in that, huh? And of course, they're going to lie to you and say, well, yeah, it is. But you keep talking with these people about this thing. And like I said, just scratching them, it will sooner or later come out. Like, for example, I believe Jeffrey Dahmer is in heaven. Okay, great example. And you encounter one face to face, mano a mano. It's like, you believe uh, Jeffrey Dahmer is in heaven? You think I'm going to hell? Yes, I do. I'm better than he is. Every single one of you that I've ever encountered 
especially, you know, because I have an annoying voice and I can get under your skin. <laughs> um, it's quite easy to draw that out of them. It really is. You don't have to work at it. They expose themselves. They're not saved. Okay. Hey, dude, any of you listening to this, okay, if someone comes around, just believe and receive, run away from them. It is too good to be true. Okay. So let's continue now. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Little children, it is the last time, and as ye have heard, that Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. What does it mean to be anti, to be against and to replace? Free gracer is against the true grace of God. They're against the true Christ, the true Jesus Christ. So they replace it with what? Another Jesus and another gospel. They are their own God. They are their own salvation. Okay? They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But ye, saints, have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. Skip down to verse 27. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you. His seed remaineth in you. The seal until the day of redemption. The permanent indwelling of the Holy Ghost. The Lord is that spirit. You know, Jesus Christ was God our Father. That's what these guys don't have. They're not saved. <clears throat> but the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you. But the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie. And even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. And if your little, you know, your God in you is saying it's okay for you to do something that is clearly contrary to the scripture, um, that, that's not God. That's the devil. You're lost. Okay? You're lost. Hey! You're lost, free gracer. You're lost. You're not saved. You're going to hell. Roll up another one. Remember, God loves you. Okay? Now, 1 John 4, verse 5. They are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. There's a channel. I'm going to name the channel. Pray, praise uh, the, uh, the praise that I am. Praise the I am. Uh, the guy's name is Tom, and he's he he had a falling out with one of his female caco demon devils that he did things with. The, the the guy's a free gracer, and that guy is an absolute bluttering idiot on the level of Jack Smack. Uh, the guy is stupid. Um, he, he is. He's a bluttering idiot. Okay, you listen to. I don't recommend you do this. But when you listen to his little live streams that go on for six, seven hours, um, it's all worldly. It's all worldly. It's all this antinomian, this pond scum doctrine. Okay? That's all it is. They are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world. Okay? John 7. John 7. And please don't 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 check that guy out. I just I brought that up. You know, some of you actually know who to whom I'm referring. Stay away from these people. These, these people want to bring you to hell. The end that justifies the means is when we, the body of Christ, is, is out of here. They're going to be stuck. On, they're going to be left behind, preaching the same thing to you and damning people to hell when they take the mark of the beast. Okay. John seven six and seven. Then Jesus said unto them, My time is not yet come, but your time is always ready. 
The world cannot hate you. But me it hateth. Because I testify of it. That the works thereof are evil. And see, the Jesus of Scripture puts his finger on that one thing that you lack. And see, their argument to that is, well, that's before they're saved. What do you do with Romans 7 there, idiot? Oh, well, what? Oh, that was before Paul was saved. Really? We're, we're going to finish this video in Romans 7, in its entirety. Okay? Uh, no, that's all present tense. Okay? See, your God, which is Satan, doesn't convict you of sin, but convinces you you're deceiving and being deceived that you're righteous as you're continuing on in sin and guiding others into sin. Okay? Guiding them onto their father, the devil. All right? And see, the antinomianists, atheists, they don't hate you. They, 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 it's like, dude, come on, man. That, that's, I mean, that doesn't make sense. And see, I've encountered atheists, a lot of them, who are expecting to hear, you know, God loves you, just believe and receive. And when you say, uh, no, that's, that's satanic. That's of the devil. That's damning you. And the, the atheists would be like, what? It's like, you're a Christian. I, I, number one, I'm not a Christian. Thank you very little. I'm not a Christian. That opens doors. Okay? That opens doors. All right? It really does. That really does. And speaking with atheists, it, it, they're right in their assertions. Like, well, you know what, what these guys say doesn't make sense. And it doesn't. They're right about that. But see, they don't hate the antinomianists. They'll stay away from you and think you're crazy. Yeah, but see, the world hates us saints because we have the Father who dwells within us. Okay? All right? We have the Father who dwells within us who convicts the world of sin. Okay? And also does that with us as well. But Romans chapter 13, Romans chapter 13, Verses 11 on to verse 14. Romans 13, 11 on to verse 14. And knowing that, and that, excuse me, knowing the time, that now is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. Yes, we are one day closer to the redemption of the purchased possession. Some of us are one day closer to our death. Hey, don't you worry. When I go, there will be another, there will be another saint who will, you know, come. There are, you know, when one of us go, the Lord always brings up other people or makes you aware of other people. Okay? It's when the Lord isn't doing that is when you all got to be concerned. Okay? Just just to let you know. And who am I? I'm nothing. I'm nothing. But, you know, when one saint goes home, the Lord will make the body aware of another saint. Okay? All right? Just, just to let you know. But, yes, we're one day closer to the redemption of the purchased possession. And some of us to our death. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the work of darkness. And let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day. Not in rioting and drunkenness. Not in chambering and wantonness. Not in strife and envying. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. And make not provision for the flesh. To fulfill the lusts thereof. And that's all the antinomianist is about. That is all that the free gracer is about. Fulfilling the lusts of the flesh. Justifying themselves. Justifying sin. That's all they're about. 
links will be in the description box to prove that to you, okay? 2 Peter chapter 2. 2 Peter chapter 2. Verses 17 on to verse 19. These are wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, and a lot of these guys have pretty impressive vocabulary, but see, they do that to give off the impression that they have something that they don't. They're giving you the impression that because they use all these fancy schmancy words, that that is of the Lord. No, that isn't. There's nothing wrong with the vocabulary. There's nothing wrong with using fancy schmancy words in and of themselves. No, it isn't. But see, these guys are doing that to give off the illusion, the suspension of disbelief, that they are something that they are not or that they have the Lord in them, which they don't. How, I mean, I've met saints who have, you know, gotten messed up and will justify themselves for a while. But sooner or later, you have the Lord within you. One of two things. The Lord is going to bust you down and you're going to grovel in the dirt or he's going to take his hand off of you until you get to that point again where maybe you're near your death. Maybe your whole life around you collapses. Okay? But see, the point is a saint... eventually will stop justifying themselves. I have met many people who were not saints and they keep going and going and going and going and going. A saint knows that we can't justify ourselves. He who justifies us is the Lord. Okay? And see, these guys take that and twist it and mold it, bending, shaping, twisting, Witchcraft. And they do that to justify sin to you. And they make you the uh, twofold more the child of hell than themselves. Okay? Let's continue. Let's continue. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lusts of the flesh. Don't worry about it. Prayer is a work. You know, if, if uh, what, would, what did Elmer say? It's like, if anything, you just pray and say, thank you for saving me. Prayers of work, huh? <laughs> Repentance is a work, huh? Calling on the name of the Lord is a work, huh? That, that's devilish. That's, that's not God. That's not truth. And see, your flesh, prayer is contrary to your flesh. Reading scripture, much study is a weariness of the flesh. Everything that is relational to God is contrary to the sagging sin suit. They know that. That's why they offer through the lusts of the flesh. You can save yourself, if you act now, by just believing you are. Believe it and achieve it. Metaphysical mind science stuff, okay? All right? They are their own gods. They are their own salvation. And see, hey, because you have saved yourself, well, hey, God's grace is, you know, the more you sin, the more grace you get. You know, and hey, we can continue in sin because God's grace abounds. Which is contrary to Scripture. Which they are in banking on Counting on you not knowing anything of, that is how these guys are able to deceive you. Through much wantonness, those that were clean escape from them who live in error. And the antinomianists live in error. Okay? While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, the same as he brought in bondage. Remember, brother, I'm speaking to a specific brother. Whenever you read that part in Scripture, whenever you read it, always make the Romans 6. Do that in front of the person that you're witnessing to. 
Every do it every single time. Do it. Romans 6 verse 16. Always do this, especially in that context in 2 Peter, brother. Always do it. Know ye not that whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Now see, Christians like uh, John MacArthur, who is his own God, who wrote his own Bible finally, they say that servant ought to be slave. And I forget what the Greek word is. It doesn't matter. A slave has no will of their own. A servant has a choice to make. And see, the way this works is the antinomianist comes around preaching to you that you're your own God where you can save yourself by just thinking that you're saved. Hence, they put the shackles on you and keep you enslaved to sin that now, because you saved yourself because of your own thought, now, hey, what's to prevent you from justifying anything? Because, hey, remember... The Holy Ghost doesn't convict you of sin. You were once of the world, but yet you're living in the world and all neck deep in worldly things, being justified by your God, okay, the devil. Okay, your father, the devil. All right? All right? Now, Jude. Jude. Remember, Jude does not have chapters. Verses 3 and 4. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, common to all people, it's available to all. Yes, it is. But see, there's a requirement. See, and, and the antinomianist doesn't, they want to be free to do whatever they want to do. That's the whole thing of it. And I mean, free grace. $1,000 challenge again. Hey, sweetie pie. Show me free grace. I'll give you a $1,000 of money I don't have. Show it to me. Show it free grace. Show it to me. How about this? How about this? I'll give you $2,000 of money I don't have. From the authorized version. You show me free grace in the scripture. Show it to me. Okay? $2,000. Money I don't have. Okay? The common salvation. Common to all. God is no respecter of persons. The Jew and Gentile have access the same way to the Father. By His grace through faith. Our faith, too. Okay, not... <laughs> don't believe infiltrators who are emulators who want to look like the guy from Maine who tell you that your faith isn't yours that it's actually Jesus Christ's faith okay that guy is a wicked devil I'm not gonna, I, I, I ain't going to say his name stay away from that guy that guy he's saying that about me because I held a loaded gun to my head he never answered the argument but see that's what they that's what devils do that's what devils do you know they want to justify Rome, so they attack a video because I was wearing a certain a, a plaid shirt. Okay. Anyway, anyway, common salvation, and also to watch out for the Pentecostal, who's well, you know, speaking in tongues is not for everybody. I have a different salvation than you. Except giving evidence by speaking in tongues. Well, not everybody speaks in tongues. Okay. God's salvation is available to everybody. But see, it requires brokenness. God's grace costs you your self-righteousness. And self-righteousness is what every antinomianist thrives in. They're not saved. They are not saved. It was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this con condemnation. Uh, that's not Calvinism. That means that they already made their choice. That's what that means. 
Okay, it's not uh, elect and non-elect of Calvin. And that that's that's stupid. That's stupid. Okay, you talk about something that leads to pride. Okay, that's just plain stupid. No, they were ordained to this condemnation. Why? Because they're ungodly men. Pharaoh was already in his heart before the Lord led him along. He had already in his heart convinced himself that he was his own God, that he was a God. And, uh, his, historians, atheists will even back that fact up, that yes, the Pharaohs themselves even saw themselves as gods. Okay? Big G, by the way. Blasphemy. All right? All right? And yes, God led Pharaoh along. Yes, he did, because Pharaoh already made his choice. All right? So let's continue. Ungodly man, men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. That's what free gracers do. Listen to them speak. Little stupid head guy from Canada there. I mean, he, he, he's, got, got, he's got a great voice. He's a good talk show host, okay? <laughs> he is. He is. Uh, that's all it is about. Justifying sin lasciviousness okay that's all it is about with these guys all right and they push your righteousness not the Lord's you're righteous because you just believe therefore you have a license to do whatever because you're not bound to any morality of the law morality of the law and when you listen to guys like uh, Tom over there then where do these guys get their morals from? <laughs> okay. When when the bloke of Blackpool, at least, and he's, he's a lost devil, when he has the facade of a better image than they do, and I hate to say that, that that's, that's disturbing. Okay? That's disturbing. <coughs> Yes, ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God, Lord God, and our Lord Jesus Christ. One, that's one God. And these guys are Trinitarians. They believe in three gods. Okay? They're lost. Antinomianism is a byproduct of Vatican II. A form of Gnosticism, actually. But it was refined with Vatican II. It's ecumenical. Because all Christian faiths and denominations it applies to. Even King James Bible-believing Christians. Okay? Because you can have an Episcopalian. You can have a Baptist. You can have a Methodist. You can have a German Catholic, okay? You can have a Pentecostal. Pentecostal uh, Catholics, uh, but then again, it's a daughter of the whore. But see, it, it's, it infects. It's the battery acid that runs the heresy of Christianity. And it infects all these areas. That's why we, are, we should abandon Christianity. Okay? <laughs> Okay, and also now in Jude, go to verses 10 on to verse 13. But these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally, because they're, unre they're not saved. Okay, as brute beasts, in those things they corrupt themselves. You know, dear sweetheart, you know, you, you, you're a devil going to hell, and... Um, uh, <sighs> Don't you got a plane to catch, huh? Anyway, anyway. They're corrupting themselves. I mean, think about it. The level of self-justification, self-glorification that one has when you utter the statement, well, the Holy Ghost in you doesn't convict you of sin. So then, you're sinless? You have no sin? Have no sin in 
all things are lawful for you. So you can do whatever you want without any consequence. That, that's a law uh, against even the law of what? Physics, I think it is. For every action, there is a reaction. Okay, I mean, come on. But see, people are eating that up. When you can do something that you know is wrong and get away with it and be made to feel good while doing it, just, hey, just believe and receive, buddy. God loves you. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and have ran greedily after the error of Balaam. Balaam. This one doesn't have the line across the two waves. For reward. And perished in the gainsaying of Korah. These are spots in your feasts of charity. When they feast with you. They want to be with us, huh? Yeah. Feeding themselves without fear. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Dude, <laughs> there's no fear of God in someone when they make the absurd statement that the Holy Ghost within you doesn't convict you of sin. That, that, there's no fear of God there. There is no fear of God there. Okay, that's another God. That's not the God who is. Okay? Clouds they are without water. Carried about of winds. Trees whose fruit withereth. Without fruit. Twice dead. Second death. Plucked up by the roots. Raging waves. And what are we reading to? Verse 13. Raging waves of the sea. Foaming out their own shame. And boasting it. Wandering stars. To whom is reserved the blackness of darkness. Ever. Mm -hmm. Galatians 2, Galatians 2, verses 4 on to verse 6. Galatians 2, verses 4 on to verse 6. And that because of false brethren unawares brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. Now think about that. Now, context he's making reference onto Judaizers who want to come in and say, hey, you got to keep the commandments still. You know, which nobody could do perfectly except the Lord who already did that, okay? But, you know, these guys will infiltrate in circles to see our liberty that we have in Jesus, in Christ Jesus, the actual Jesus is, who is. And then they will come around and then they will give you a counterfeit of that in order to justify sin and draw away people after them. Okay? To whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. And these guys will claim, some of them do, to rightly divide in the word of truth, but yet it's by grace through faith throughout every dispensation. That's not rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? Rightly dividing the word of truth means that in every dispensation, there are seven of them, I preach and teach that, um, salvation is different in the uh, dis dispensations. Some are very similar, but they are all differing one from another. Okay, like the time of the patriarchal period is similar to the, to today. Okay, uh, during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay, it's going to be similar to under the law. But remember, the changing factor is the death, burial, and resurrection, and the blood shed on the cross. Okay, you got to remember that. The kingdom of heaven is all works. Similar, again, similar to the Garden of Eden. Okay? And then the final and seventh dispensation is when the devil is cast into the lake of fire and death and hell and everything like that into the lake of fire and sin is eradicated, the seventh and final dispensation. No sin. Okay? That's rightly dividing the word of truth. These idiots tell you that it's by grace through faith from beginning to end. That's not rightly dividing the word of truth. God's grace is in every dispensation, or else we would go up like a plume of smoke. Okay? You've got to watch it with these idiots. 
You really do. And, you know, I say that to offend them. There are, uh, with the exception of Tom and Jack Smack, those guys are idiots. But, you know, it's a little sweetie in Canada. He's not stupid. He's not an idiot. I say that to offend him. He's my enemy. And I'm his. Oh, yeah. So I purposely say that of him. Even though he's not stupid. He's not. Little sweetheart from Canada, he's not stupid. He's not an idiot. He knows he... he uh, like Elmer from New York. He's not stupid. He's not an idiot either. They know precisely what they're doing. They know that they're offering you another Jesus and a false gospel. And they know. So, I purposely refer to them as such to annoy them. Okay? Just so you know. Just so you know. <laughs> God loves you, buddy. All right, let's continue with what we are reading. To whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. But of these who seem to be somewhat whatsoever they were, and maketh no matter to me, God accepteth no man's person. For they who seem to be somewhat in conference added nothing to me. And we'll stop right there. Ephesians 4, now. Ephesians 4, verses 17 on to verse 24. 17 on verse 24 in Ephesians 4. This I say therefore and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart who being past feeling, have given themselves over onto lasciviousness. Free gracers. That's what they're about. They're the gods of lasciviousness. Okay, they are. They are. Okay, that has been proven. All right. To work all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ. You haven't. Because they're Trinitarians. That's not the true God anyway. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus and the spirit of truth, he will guide you in all truth. The Lord is that spirit. Okay? That ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. <laughs> and that ye put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness walk in the new man see choice to make God doesn't force you to walk a certain way you have to make the right choices you have to want to walk according to the way the Lord would have you to and see most people don't want that Okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. We want verses 1 on to verse 6. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. Remember, they are of the world. They speak of the world, and the world hears them. Okay? But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, which barely these guys do. Okay? <laughs> Meaning, they hardly use any scripture to begin with. But when they do, they're handling it uh, deceitfully. They don't expound. They don't compare scripture with scripture. Okay? But by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on to them. And Jesus is the fullness of the Godhead bodily, spirit, soul, and body. Okay? All right? They don't have the right God to begin with. They're Trinitarians. Okay? 
and the Trinity is not God. For we preach not ourselves. Wait a minute. Oh yeah. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who hath commanded the light to shine out of darkness hath shined in our hearts to give light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Okay? Now, go to uh, Isaiah 65. Isaiah 65. Don't worry, we're going to refute your little twisting about, uh, you know, he convicts the world of sin. We're just uh, going through scripture showing people how wicked you devils really are. Okay? And scripture is exposing you, devils. Okay? Isaiah 65, verses 1 on verse 5. I am sought of them that ask not for me. Just believe and receive. And see, when you go the way of the cross, which begins with brokenness of yourself, self-righteousness, taking responsibility, personal responsibility. That's why these guys hate Romans 1, 2, and 3. Uh, Elmer from New York even referred to the Romans road as the road to hell. Okay? All right? A fellow disciple of Martin Richland. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. All right? And they say, hey, just believe and receive. And see, when you go the way of the cross, the way that God requires, and you are broken, destroyed, devastated, and have the hell scared out of you, you as the lesser cannot wait to cry out to the Lord. It just happens. See, these guys. I am sought of them that ask not for me. Now this is, of course, making this, this was under the law. Okay, we're looking at this for our instruction and in righteousness, okay? I am found of them that sought me not. I said, Behold me, behold me unto a nation that was not called by my name. I have spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people, which walketh in a way that was not good after their own thoughts. Just believe and receive. Their own gods. Okay? A people that provoketh me to anger continually to my face. Think about that. These guys, left and left and right, are justifying sin all the way they go. And telling people that that's dangerous. I mean, I, I hope the Lord rebuked that guy who said that. Um, and many of the and this is what these guys teach you. That when you're saved, the Holy Ghost doesn't convict you of sin, but of righteousness. Meaning, okay, you're doing something sinful. Their God, which is not the God of Scripture, don't worry about it. You're, you're okay. You're okay. Don't worry. Lord, this is, this is pretty bad. Don't worry about it. I, I say by faith through grace. Oh, it's, it's actually grace through faith. But see, they twist it. <laughs> they twist it. Okay. They are the measure of their own salvation. They are their own salvation. Okay. They are. They really are. They really are, okay? And they provoke the Lord to anger continually to his face by saying, God has said, and he never said. That sacrifice in gardens and burneth incense upon altars of brick, which remain among the graves, dead in trespasses and sins. They remain among the graves, free among the dead. Free among the dead. And lodge in the monuments which eat swine's flesh and broth of abominable things is in their vessels. Remember, doctrinally this was under the law. We are looking for at this for instruction in righteousness because <coughs> we can't eat pork today. Okay? Which say, Stand by thyself, come not near to me, for I am holier than thou. Hey, free grace. I'm saved because I just believe. I'm better than he is. Anyone who spends time in Scripture 
with the Lord within them will plainly see that you guys are devils. See, you guys are able to infect the masses. You are. It's the, the small remnant of those masses that get away from you, that come to the actual Lord who is. That's who we try to reach. Because the majority of mankind want that kind of thing. Which say, stand by thyself, come not near to me, for I am holier than thou. These are a smoke in my nose, a fire that burneth all the day. And what are we reading to in this? Uh, verse 5. Ah, we'll leave it at that. Now, Isaiah 66, verses 3 and 4. He that killeth an ox as if he slew a man. He that sacrificeth a lamb as if he cut off a dog's neck. He that offereth an oblation as if he offered swine's blood. He that burneth incense as if he blessed an idol. Making, I believe, reference on to the current dispensation where we are not required to do any of those things salvifically today. Okay? But, yea, they have chosen their own ways, and their soul delighteth in their abominations. The antinomian is free gracer. It's all about that, about their abominations, what they can get away with, what they can do, how they justify sin. You know, that's all they're about. I also will choose their delusions. Careful what you wish for. I will bring their fears upon them. Because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear. But they did evil before mine eyes, and chose that in which I delighted not. See, the reason why they're, the, what they, these guys talk about, about how the Holy Ghost doesn't convict them of sin, is because they're not saved. They don't have God within them anyway. They have that spirit of Antichrist, that's the spirit of the world within them. And of course, it's not going to convict you of sin. Of course not. Of course not. Acts 25, 23 on to 27. Acts 25, 23 on to 27. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I wrote that down wrong. It's Acts 28. Acts 28, verses 23 on to verse 27. Acts 28, 23 on the 27. And when they had appointed him a day, there came many to him into his lodging, to whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of God. That's reference unto the spiritual, not the actual physical, literal kingdom of heaven. Persuading them concerning Jesus, both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets from morning till evening. And some believed the things which were spoken, and some believed not. And when they agreed not among themselves, they departed after that Paul had spoken one word. Well spake the Holy Ghost by Isaiah, Isaiah the prophet, unto our fathers, saying, Go unto this people and say, Hearing ye shall hear and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see and not perceive. For the heart of this people is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed, lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal to them. Be it known therefore unto you that salvation that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles, and they and that they will hear it. Okay? We added verse twenty eight. Now first Timothy four. 1 Timothy 4, they are of the world. Therefore they speak of the world, and the world heareth them. Now the Spirit, 1 Timothy 4, verses 1 and verse 3, Now the capital S Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrine of devils. Just believe and receive. Free grace antinomianism is doctrine of devils. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared 
with a hot iron. And see, that's the, that's the effect. That's the thing. Conscience seared with a hot iron. Conscience seared with a hot iron. Jude 9, or uh, Jude 19, excuse me. Jude 19. Jude 19. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, led by their senses, having not the capital S spirit. The more you harden yourself in sin and justify sin, okay, you are searing your conscience. Sin becomes easier the more you do it. See, and walking in his righteousness according to the scriptures gets harder because it's contrary to the flesh. See, they offer you something of the flesh. We saints offer you that of the capital S spirit. Okay? All right? Proverbs 18. <clears throat> Just two verses, one and two. Proverbs 18. Through desire, a man having separated himself, seeketh and intermittleth with all wisdom, intermeddle with all wisdom, mm. all wisdom. Mm. And verse 2. A fool hath no delight in understanding, departing from evil, but that his heart may discover itself. Thus, you got the antinomianist pig that comes around with their satanic doctrine, verse 5 in 1 John 4. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them, and the world heareth them. Verse 6, we are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby we know the lowercase s, spirit of truth, and the lowercase s, spirit of error. John 8, John 8, 43 on 44. John 8, 43 on 44. Why do ye not understand my speech? even because ye cannot hear my word. Ye, plural, are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. I will be like the Most High. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him, and it is Jesus who dwells within the saved believer. These guys, these antinomianist free gracers, None of them have the Lord within them. They're not saved. They're not saved, people. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. It comes from within him, from his own heart. For he is a liar and the father of it. John 3. John 3. John 3. Verses 19 under 21. This is the condemnation that light has come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. The antinomianist is never going to convict you. It's never going to tell you, it's like, hey, you shouldn't do that. But it's like, don't worry about it. You know, the Holy Ghost in you doesn't convict you of sin. And see, when a saint comes around preaching contrary to that, oh, they hate that. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his de deeds may be manifest that they are wrought in God. Now, in Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 8, okay, 
verses 1 on to verse 10. Now, remember, people, free gracers are not saved. They're lost. And I'm specifically referring to these people who are promoting this. None of them are saved. There are some out there who are saints who got messed up with antinomianism and they are retracting. They are getting out of that. Okay, dear brother. They're getting out of that. They know. They know. They, you know. That the grace that they offer is not the scriptural grace of God. Okay. I'm not talking about. I'm talking about these guys who promote this garbage. Okay. I'm talking about the, you know, pretty boys. And idiots. And Elmer. And stuff like that. Okay. That's who I'm talking about. Um, uh, uh, jo rejoice in thy word guy I, that, that's who I'm talking about okay these guys none of them are saved none of them are saved but Romans 8 verses 1 on verse 10 there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus keep reading who walk not after the flesh but after the capital S spirit do I, 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 listen to these guys what they talk about they use philosophy vain deceit they're all about the world they're all about the flesh you, you, you prove that right every time you open your mouth there sweetie pie all of you you prove that every time you open your mouth that you're all about flesh okay for the law of the capitalist spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. See, we're not under any obligation morally to law. Really. We've addressed that already. So then what's your standard? Morally. Morally. Uh, hey, uh, Sugar Britches, I never once preached that you have to keep the law to be saved, salvifically. Uh, but see, you guys, morally, morally, the morality of the law, the moral law that you're not bound to. Really? Really? The morality of it, the moral law, you're not bound to. That, that, that's what they teach. <laughs> uh, like I said, the things to refuting their, their nonsense will be in the description box for you. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son. Hey, Jake, have you made it this far? Do you watch me? You probably do, you stupid little jerk. That's for a certain individual. You see this? Okay. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And for sin, condemn sin in the flesh. I'll hold your place and go to Galatians chapter 4. Okay. All right. See, God in flesh never sinned. The flesh itself was sinful. God in flesh never sinned. See, and he keeping the law perfectly there, Jake? Okay, you little idiot. That's what sanctified the body of sin. Why his blood was precious, you little idiot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Galatians 4, verses 4 and verse 7. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under law to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons and because ye are sons God has sent forth the capital S spirit of his son into your hearts crying Abba Father wherefore, wherefore thou art no more a servant but a son and if a son then an heir of God through Christ okay let's 
continue in Romans 8. That, verse 4, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the capital S, spirit. And free gracers only walk out, they're, they're all about flesh. They're all about flesh, people, okay? I mean, come on. <laughs> Watch, listen to these guys. Huh. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. These guys create evil. They invent evil. Ways in which you can circumvent the truth. It's like the Jesuits Constitution. They can explain away anything to where you can break all the commandments of God and still have a good conscience. See, it's Jesuitical. It's yea hath God said. But they that are after the capitalist spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded, fleshly minded, is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be because yeah it can't be it can't be why because that spirit of antichrist is that spirit that's in you antinomianist free gracers you are your own god you are of your father the devil so of course the, the spirit that's in you of course isn't going to convict you of sin because there is no sin but see to them, sin is preaching the true Christ Jesus. True salvation. That's sin to them. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the capitalist spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. And he doesn't dwell in the free grace. Okay? Now if any man have not the capitalist spirit of Christ... He is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. And the spirit is life because of righteousness. And see, the free gracer would come to that and say, So see, you can go ahead and do whatever you want. Uh, no, you can't. Yes, you can. All things are lawful for you. Yes, you can do whatever you want. A saved person can do whatever a lost person can do. But see, that proves, if that is your motivating thing that you are doing, there is no fear of God before your eyes. His, his glory means nothing to you. It's all about you. About justifying yourself. Making you feel good. Okay, that's, that's all it is with these guys. John 16. John 16. Verses 1 under verse 13. John 16. Verses 1 under verse 13. Now. Now. Okay, here it is. These things have I spoken unto you, that ye should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogue. Jay, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. Yeah. Yeah. These things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. No, they don't. Because they believe in three gods, the Trinity. Which they say three, one, two, three, makes one. You know, I, I'm, a, I'm a dropout and one plus one plus one equals three. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But these things have I told you, that when the time shall come, ye may remember that I told you of them. And these things I said not unto you at the beginning, because I was with you. But now I go my way to him that sent me. And none of you asketh me, whither goest thou? But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for me, for you, excuse me, that I go away. For if I, come, if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. And that's a capital C. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Romans 12, verses 1 on to verse 2. And see, free gracers boast in the fact that they can use foul language, make sexual innuendo, 
uh, threaten people actually with violence. That is true, okay? And, and they justify it all the way. And they're telling you that that's the God of Scripture. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And the way these guys behave, they're giving the impression to you that God is okay with you being identical to the world that he supposedly saved you out of. Of sin, because they believe not on me. And the antinomianist believes in three gods. Of righteousness, because I go to the Father, and ye see me no more. Of judgment. These are the guys, don't judge me. Only God can judge me. We've talked about that quite in length, okay? Of judgment, because the prince of this world is judge. I have many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. How be it when he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will shew you things to come. Verse 14, he shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall shew it unto you. So, their Jesus doesn't convict you of sin. Now see, what they say here, well that's talking about the world. We're not of the world. Yes you are. You, you antinomianists, you're not saved. You're all lost. You're all lost. Okay? You are of the world. You are the world. <laughs> okay? Uh, 2 Corinthians 13. 2 Corinthians 13. 2 Corinthians 13. Verses 5 on to verse 8. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Hmm. You examine yourselves daily by searching Scripture. Okay? Search the Scriptures daily, whether these things be so. The Lord in you, saint, if you're in the wrong, the Lord's going to make you know it through the Scripture. That's how He's going to convict you. Okay? All right? Any saint who's messed up, has messed up, has done something contrary to Scripture, they read the Scripture, oh, Lord, take the hide off your rear end, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Not with these guys, because they're not saved. And they generally use the authorized version. <clears throat> Examine yourselves whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you? except ye be reprobates. But I trust that ye shall know that we are not reprobates. Now I pray God that ye do no evil. Question. Do no evil. How are you going to know what is evil? Scripture tells you what is evil, but how are you going to be convicted of that evil of Scripture without the Lord himself convicting you of it? <laughs> yeah, it's 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 full of wonder that these guys can get away with this. Not that we should appear approved, but that ye should do that which is honest, though we be as reprobates. In whose eyes? We saints were reprobates unto who? The world. Okay? For we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. The antinomianist is nothing but contrary to the truth. Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. Verses 6 on to verse 15. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Do what is right according to the scripture. Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. And this is all the this is all the antinomianist right here. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. 
They are of the world. Therefore they speak of the world, and the world heareth them. For in him, Jesus, dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one, spirit, soul, and body. Huh. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power, in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, and putting off the body of sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. And what are we reading to on verse 15? Buried with him in baptism, where also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. And you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened, made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, talking about the law, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross, and have spoiled principalities and powers, he made a shoe of them openly, triumphing over them in it. What did I say on verse 15? Yes. Okay? Now, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Oh, one moment, please. Sorry about that. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Verses 1 on to verse 10. But of the times and seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light, and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Okay? And now, 1 John chapter 1, verses 8 on to verse 10. 1 John chapter 1. Verses 8 on to verse 10. Now, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. A lost person. I'm not a sinner. Verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Calling on the name of the Lord, you know, calling upon the name of the Lord through contrition, uh, through brokenness and contrition, fear of the Lord, okay, that. Verse 10, if we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Hmm. Hmm. You know, in Psalms, it talks about, Prove me and try my heart to, so that I may see if there is any evil way in me. Okay, let me find that. One second. Psalm 139. It's getting really hot in here. <laughs> Psalm 139. Psalm 139. Verses 23 and 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and, and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. Now this was in the Old Testament under the law for the giving of the Holy Ghost before the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, yes, but that crosses dispensational lines. God within you is going to convince you, convict you of sin. Okay? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Absolutely he is. Absolutely he is. And 1 John 3, verses 18 on to verse 24 now. My little children, let us love 
let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And hereby we know that we are of the truth, and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart, and knoweth all things. Love it, if our heart condemn us not, then we have confidence toward God. Ah, now see, the antinomianist will come to this and see, see, my heart doesn't condemn me. Uh, that's because you don't have the true God. You just saved yourself by your own belief. <laughs> you justify sin. You don't have God to begin with. Beloved, okay, and whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And see right there, they're, they're like, you don't have to do anything. They're not under even the morality of the law. Hmm. And this is the commandment, that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. And who is the son of God? The second person in the Trinity? No. No. Again, see, they don't even have the right God, people. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, dwelleth in him and he in him. And hereby we know that he abideth in us by the Spirit which he hath given us. Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7. Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth? For the woman which hath an husband is bound by the law to her husband, so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loosed from the law of her husband. So then, so then if, while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from the law, that law, so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. And for those of you, yes, Sue's two husbands are in hell, okay? <laughs> Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that ye should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sins, which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. But now we are delivered from the law, that being dead wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit, and not in the oldness of the letter, referring unto the Old Testament law. What does this mean? You cannot keep the commandments of God perfectly, the Ten Commandments, okay? And knowing that you can't ought to break you. Knowing that, well, I can't keep them perfectly. And you can't, only God could, okay? That's what he's talking about, all right? What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. But sin, taking occasion by the commandment, wrought in me all manner of concupiscence. For without the law, sin was dead. And of course, when these, these guys, they, they, the morality of the law, or any moral law whatsoever, they're not bound to anything. It's a free-for-all. For I was alive without the law once. Uh, wait, but sin taking... Uh, I, uh, verse 9. For I was alive without the law once. But when the commandment came, sin revived, and I died. And the commandment which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. Life, keeping you away from the things that God hates, but found uh, made unto you death, because you can't keep it. For sin taking occasion by the commandment deceived me, and by it slew me. Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just and good. 
Was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid. But sin. See, antinomianists have a problem with sin. They do. They don't believe in sin, period. Sin to them is someone, a saint, exposing their, stupid, their stupidity, their wicked, devilish doctrines. That to them is sin. But to an antinomianist, there is no sin. All, it's, it's, it's all gay. Hey, do whatever you want. It's a license to sin. And see, they come around, well, God doesn't convict you of sin. He convicts you of righteousness. Don't worry about doing that. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. That's exactly what they're talking about. Was that which was good, was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid. But sin, that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do I allow not. Present tense. For what I would, that do I not, but what I hate, that do I. Sin. Paul, saved. What is he saying? For that which I, uh, what, for that which I do, I allow not. Sin. How, would, how was he aware of sin if he wasn't being convicted by the Lord who dwelled within him? Come on. Okay? <laughs> Come on. For what I would not sin, that do I not. But what I hate, sin, that do I. And see, the antinomianist makes you fall in love with your sin. Don't worry about it. Just go on in it. Don't worry. You save yourself. It's okay. God, God's not going to convict you of it. He's going to convict you that you're righteous. So go ahead. If I do then, if then I do that which I would not sin, I consent unto the law that is good. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Ah. For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would, I do not, not sin. But the evil which I would not, that I do, sin. Now if I do that, I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Verse 21. I find then a law, that when I would do good, evil is present with me. You could say, well, Paul was very knowledgeable. Yes, he would. Yes, he was. But how does he go, why would he go about to find a law after he has done something that he hates? Oh, that be conviction of the Holy Ghost of sin within the saved believer. You know, the Jesuits uh, a couple years ago with the toilet paper famine here in America and elsewhere, I think, got everyone so convinced that toilet paper was going to run out and Americans were going to have to be using washcloths or whatever and they made the stores bare and the Jesuit order the Jesuits in Rome were rolling on the ground laughing at people for they were because they were able to deceive people into buying something so stupid that's what these antinomianist free gracers do most people do not have any knowledge of Scripture. Not even a Bible. Okay? Hence, these guys are able to get away with outlandish, crazy stuff that if people had at least a minimal working of Scripture, knowledge, working knowledge of Scripture, they might be able to be like, whoa, wait a minute, man. <clears throat> Verse 
For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. Who is that inward man? You know, the hidden man of the heart, Christ with Christ in you, the hope of glory. Yeah. God within you who cannot sin. God within you who will not be okay with your sin, who will not lead you into sin, who will not guide you into sin. But I see another law in my members, flesh, working against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. Meaning that, okay, he knows what he ought to do is right, but he also is aware that he can't do it right. All He can't. Okay, and see, Paul is not justifying. What he is saying is, you're going to sin. You're going to sin, and the Lord is going to convict you of sin. You're not going to lose what isn't yours to lose. Salvation, that belongs to the Lord if you're actually saved. Okay, but saints sin. Saints sin. Okay, and the Lord in you is surely, will surely convict you of sin. Okay, that is going to be it for this video. Um, sorry, uh, dear brethren, um, my health is, uh, you know, you devil's praying to your God for me. I wish you wouldn't. <laughs> I, w I wish you wouldn't. Uh, my health has been um, pretty deplorable lately. Um, so it is what it is. Thank you for watching this. If you do, dear brethren, hopefully this, like I said, we, uh, we got lots of stuff uh, exposing these devils and their heretical doctrine. Okay, please don't fall for it. Please don't fall for it. Thank you for watching if you do. I'm going to get this uploaded and we will see you in the next video.